carried out using the Teams protocol for remote meetings. Um, I would ask you all to keep your microphones on mute unless I call on you to speak. You may indicate you're having uh, technical difficulties if you if you want in the chat, but please no debate in the chat whatsoever. And I would stress that to any visitors to the committee, uh, you can say that you're having uh, IT problems, but nothing else in the chat, please. OK, um, please try and keep the background noise down to a minimum at all times and um, turn your phones to mute. OK, so um, that being said, um, I will now ask Tammy to uh, Oh, and the meeting is also being recorded. So that will be available at a later date. So Tammy, if you could please uh, do the roll call. Yes, certainly. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I note your presence. I Chair, am. if it's OK with you, Chair, I will ask members as we go along for any declarations of interest for the item on the agenda today while we're doing the roll call. Is that OK? Yes, if, yeah, that'd be fine. Thank you. OK, thank you, Chair. Do you have any declarations of interest? No, I do not. No. Thank you. Same questions, please, to Vice Chair Councillor Percy. Present Tammy and no interest to declare. Thank you, Councillor Percy. Uh, Chair, we have apologies from Councillor Dennis Keogh. So, Councillor Ros Davis. Present all and no interest to declare. Thanks, Councillor Davis. Councillor Ridian Maisan. Uh, uh, President Tammy, uh, no interest to declare. <clears throat> Thank you. Councillor Scott Bamsey. Present Tammy and no interest to declare. Thank you. Councillor Steve Hunt. I am here, Tammy, and I have no interest to declare. Thank you. Councillor Arwin Woolcock. Yes, I'm present, Chair, and no interest to declare. Thank you. Councillor Suzanne Renkes. Present, no interest to declare. Thank you. Councillor Rachel Taylor. Present, Tammy, and no interest to declare. Thank you. Councillor Chris Williams. Present Chair, Tammy and no interest to declare. Thank you. And Councillor Mark Prothero, please. Present, thanks Tammy, no interest to declare. Thank you. There we are Chair, that's the roll call complete for members of the committee. We also have present some local members today. Mm -hmm. Councillor Scott Jones. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Councillor Jones, are you present? Yeah, President. Thanks, Tammy. Thanks, Councillor Jones. Councillor Nicola Davis. Hi, Tammy. I'm present. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Jane Jones, please. I'm present, Tammy. No interest. Thank you. I move on to officers. Kerry Morris. Uh, present, Tammy. Thank you. And Steve Ball. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Present. Good morning. Um, Simon Evans, is Simon present? Good morning, Tammy. I'm present. Thank you, Simon. Highways officer, Justin Griffith. Good morning, Tammy. I'm present. Thank you. Uh, Joanna Weeks, is Joanna with us, Justin? No, just myself today. Thank you. Lovely. Thanks, Justin. Uh, legal officers, Mike Shaw. Yes, uh, present, Tammy. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Gavin White, is Gavin present with us this morning? No, not this morning. OK, myself, Tammy Davis. I'm a Democratic Services Officer. Um, present also representing Avon Valley Adventure Resort. We have Jamie Piper. Good morning, present Tammy. Good morning, Jamie. Thank you. And Claire P.S. Good morning, present. Tammy, thank you. Thank you very much. We also have a number of people present in the public gallery, I believe. Welcome. Uh, have I missed anybody off the roll call who will be taking part in the meeting this morning? No, there we are, Chair. The roll call is complete. Thank you. And uh, can I confirm we are core up for this meeting? Confirmed, yes. Chair. Thank you very much. OK, then uh, the, I'll go on to item three, which is the minutes of the previous meeting. Um, you will uh, all have received papers and the minutes of the previous meetings are on pages five to eight. And I'd like to ask somebody uh, to uh, propose they are a true record. I'll move, I'm Chair. Thank you, Councillor Hunt. Seconded? I'll second that, Chair, thanks. 
Thank Second you, Vice it. Chair. Thank you very much. OK, we have ratified the, the minutes. Um, today's meeting is a single item of business for us today. Um, it's um, quite exciting to see uh, an application come forward again for the Avon Valley Adventure Park. Uh, and I'd like to welcome the visitors, Jamie Piper and Claire Pierce, Pierce and also a member of the public, I think, who's also expressed an interest in our meeting this morning. So welcome all. And um, you will be able to speak if you've registered with Tammy. And I believe that's uh, Jamie and Claire. Yeah. OK, so you will have five minutes when I get to you. Um, if you haven't registered, I'm afraid uh, you cannot actually uh, speak at the meeting. OK, now um, this is a very exciting uh, application that we have to decide uh, today. I'm very pleased that uh, Neithbert Talbot Council and the planning committee have, as we say, stuck with it. Um, we, we've, we've persevered to give this the best chance that it can possibly have. So we have been here before, and I know that Steve will go through the report and the background to the site is, is in the report. You will also need to take into consideration um, Steve Ball's amendment sheet that was um, circulated earlier and his presentation and I'm hoping that everybody has received that. If you haven't received that, if you could just indicate in some way. No. So then, uh, without further ado, um, I will ask Mr. Ball uh, to go, we've got on pay, oh, item four, which is a report of the Head and Plan in Public Protection, matter for a decision, the is Avon Valley Adventure Resort, pages nine to 56 in the bundle. So, Mr. Ball, if you could take the committee through the report, please. Yes, of course. Uh, good morning, everybody, again. Um, as the chair's indicated, this is an application. There's only one item on the agenda, and it's one that has come back to, to members um, or previously uh, a couple of times. Um, this is effectively the third time it's come before, and this is now for a final resolution on the on the plan application before us. Um, as the chair's indicated, this is something that, that we as officers and, and the members of planning committee as well have been, um, I guess you could say we've been patient to the extent that we've been um, encouraging um, the, the people behind this scheme to come forward to demonstrate its deliverability. And we've stuck with them using your terms, Chair, through what are, let's face it, challenging times for all, um, and especially so in terms of deliverability side of things with regard to the COVID pandemic. So I think, you know, our patience has paid off insofar as we are now um, before committee again with uh, a, a request for a, a final resolution. <clears throat> as the report said, the, the mass has been brought back um, twice before. The first one was back in 19th of March 2019 when the majority of members um, were on the committee, but not necessarily everyone. So the report indicates that there was a resolution of a time which effectively was to grant plan permission, having considered all the, the impacts of the development. Um, and there was a requirement for a legal agreement, including matters at the top of page 10 relating to legal framework for e ecological biodiversity compensation, matters to do with sustainable transport and also uh, advanced landscaping, etc. Um, the, the other resolutions also related to um, the, the ability for us to effectively refuse consent if we didn't proceed with the required agreement and also to make changes to conditions. Subsequent to that, um, members of the court came back in September. Um, that effectively came about because of the, the issues that were in, in the press related to financial irregularities from the, the, the original director of the resort of the, uh, the company, who is no longer involved because the administrators have taken over and, and progressed matters um, outside of that process completely. Um, but what that uh, resolution in September did is it reaffirmed this authority support through the plan committee's resolution um, for this resort based upon an amended business plan driven by um, Peter Moore, <coughs> uh, who uh, effectively provided the indication or the information necessary to, to demonstrate that it was still a deliverable and indeed a supportable project within the com uh, constraints of the, the policy context. What the um, the 24th September committee did is effectively gave a, a six month deadline. What we what we were saying at the time is think things had stalled. We weren't um, we we wanted this to happen, but things weren't progressing as quickly as we wished to. But as we've just said at the beginning, you know, with everything going on with COVID and with the discussions that have been ongoing um, uh, liaison with the different parties involved, which have ramped up significantly over the last few months, and and they. That you know that latitude, as as the report says, has been has been possible because of the the um, the planning committee support to date. 
So what the purpose of this report, as stated at the top of page um, <clears throat> 12 is, is to advise members of, of the new submissions that have been made. And those new submissions have, have been made well from the same applicant. They've been on behalf of um, a um, effectively Salamanca group, which is uh, Claire Pierce is um, going to address you later. And effectively, it's related to a new business plan for what is now recalled the Wild Fox Resort. So it's Wild Fox Resort, Avon Valley. And what we need to do today is just assess what has changed effectively since the last resolutions to see if, if anything has changed. And that will partly related to the business plan and related to the assessing against deliverability under policy tier one of the LDP. Also consider if there's any other material changes in circumstances since that matter. Um, Briefly, other matters related to Section 106 and also um, topping and tailing to do with amended plans and conditions. So that's what the report seeks to do. Excuse me, just changing the plan for you. So <clears throat> as the um, bottom page 12 shows, there's been a number of different submissions, both in terms of supporting letters, the updated business plan. There's a support letter from Octopus Real Estate, who are the, the finances um, behind the, 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 um, uh, the new business team, the new delivery team. Indicative programming, which indicates a, a very um, uh, ambitious timescale for, for implementation of the, of the resort and also assessments relating to planning policy updates and ecological um, validations. And the submissions were also, there have been very minor changes just related to the site location plan, concept plan, master plan and parameters plan. And those are the ones that are in the circulated to you, but there's nothing material change from it. Just purely for your information, if you look at the scheme in front of you, you've got two small red lines, one at the bottom right corner, one just below the, the lift on the alpine zone. All the, the master plan effectively has taken those out and this was this was actually undertaken some time ago but it was just for clarification primarily because those those parts of the site aren't required and it's issues to do with um legal agreements etc but nothing material in that regard no. you'll also note um on page 13 that um what we've chosen to do is to undertake some additional consultation it's not based upon any any absolute statutory requirement but because it hadn't gone before the um the public for a while we, we thought it was appropriate to make sure that the new public uh, the information was publicized both on site and in the press so that so that people knew about it um the responses to that are identified in the report we have had one additional local rep representation which has been addressed within the report um and also a few additional clarifications from consultees both within the report and indeed on the amendment sheet um i would draw your attention uh, to the amendment sheet the, the, the most notable um, representation there is one from the RSPB, the Royal Society of Protection of Birds. Um, they haven't previously engaged with the with, with this application despite previous consultations, which is which is regrettable. But the matters raised, as the amendment sheet says, have already been considered in detail within all of the matters brought before this committee previously. And in that regard, while they have raised ob objection to the scheme, um, all of the, the issues raised, we're, we're quite satisfied that have been addressed and um, both within the previous reports and indeed within this report. So moving briefly in terms of the assessment, page 14 onwards talks about the updated business plan and issues deliverability. Um, and generally speaking, what the scheme needs to do, as is the case previously, is to demonstrate deliverability to the extent that we're not just granting consent for, you know, effectively a pie in the sky scheme that may never happen. And, and that's primarily because members will know that um, developments or proposals for this site have come and gone in the past and nothing's happened. They've been given consent and nothing's happened. So what we've always wanted to make sure is to demonstrate that that effectively any scheme granted plan permission actually is deliverable. We can't guarantee it will happen, but it, it means we've got to make sure that it's deliverable. Previously, both the original scheme, the, the second scheme brought in September with um, Peter Moore's change business plan have always demonstrated deliverability. And what the report says today is the Salamanca group have got involved in this scheme. They are an established institution. They do have a track record delivering large scale projects um, and they, they bring to it effectively not only um, their experience having entered into contractual processes with the landowner so that they're aligning the land ownership the financial side of things and deliverability all together but um, effectively that you know they are fully committed and they're bringing more more to the table than before insofar as not only that them as a as a project partner but they've got a very strong focus on environmental social governments and you know generating socioeconomic value over and above the environmental obligations within the report um and we are very much committed to that and we strongly believe that 
that the submissions are demonstrating true deliverability, probably even more than before. Um, and we are quite confident and comfortable in concluding within the report that effectively those submissions and the credentials of the, the project team behind it are sufficient to, to ensure that those processes align to the extent that it um, uh, fully complies with policy T01. The critical point of that, um, I would say, though, is what the, as I say, we can't guarantee it's on the ground, but what we do wish to see, and through the um, heads of terms in the agreement, we, we the at the end of the um, resolution one, it does emphasise that we feel that it's necessary for Wild Fox, i.e. The, the company that has been rebranded, because they are central to that deliverability, that they, they should become a, it was known as a developer party to the legal agreement, and that therefore forms part of this res resolution. And subject to that, we're quite comfortable and confident that this scheme now fully meets policy T01. Moving on to any changes inside of policy circumstances, for members information, whenever something comes back to you after a, a prolonged period of time, it's always necessary to consider has anything changed? Because if anything had changed, um, for example, new planning policy, new um, new government guidance, whatever it might be, if it has any material bearing on the determination of the application, we are duty bound or statutorily required to consider that and, and ensure that we, we come to a robust resolution. So what the report does very much in summary is introduce the fact that there have been changes, most notably for the Planning Policy Wales Edition 11 that members will know all about that was revised and restructured in February 2021 to coincide with and takes account the policies and approaches set out in Future Wales, which is the new um, part of the development plan in Wales. So it's the, the upper part of the development plan in Wales. And both of those are very much material planning changes and circumstances that have needed to be considered. But as the report goes in detail, which and I won't do, both of those sets of policies only add further support to the scheme such as this. They don't in any respect detract from the assessment before you. Um, and the con it very much concludes um, within the, the report that both Planning Policy Wales and Future Wales are very supportive of this kind of pro projects in terms of supporting rural com communities and the rural economy, um, you know, contributing to, you know, matters to deprivation, deprivation and inequality in these kind of areas, providing resilient ecological networks and, and the like, and, and addressing matters of connectivity. Um, and within that context, we're quite satisfied that the, the application continues to remain in accordance not only with the local development plan, but also in context of future Wales and in terms of advice within Plan Policy Wales 11. Page 22 then, <coughs> excuse me, onwards and looks at matter to do with the the legal agreement and planning balance issues um, and and I, I won't make, make this too too complex but members uh, will or may recall that the issues to do with night jar the impact on night jar and reptiles and and biodiversity was a significant matter because this is um, a very significant development is going to undertake substantial earth movements and therefore there's going to be impact on biodiversity those impacts have been considered in significant detail before um, what the report brings to you now is a slight change in the planning balance insofar as the discussions we've had to date with um, the, the previous parties and indeed um, commencing with Salamanca Group relate to the need for the legal agreement to have effectively a financial backstop figure within the legal agreement. Um, and what, what this is about is that there is there's an expectation that a second site will still come forward and we're, we're quite comfortable and confident with the progressions in that regard. Um, but just in case that isn't possible because of the magnitude and importance of this project, a, a figure of £1.25 million um, split over certain um, payment uh, triggers effectively would be included within the Section 106, Section 106 agreement. And this is effectively ecological compensation for funding biodiversity projects, which and the definition defined in the bottom of page 22. Um, and what the report effectively says is we're quite comfortable um, in terms of how that, that will deal with the issues of mitigation and compensation. But what, what we cannot 100% guarantee is that that will be sufficient to mitigate for all of the identified ecological impacts, because it may well be that it's necessary to, to identify a different site and introduce different forms of management and um, processes on that site to, to provide mitigation. So what the report says is, um, in the event that that backstop payment is required, we cannot 100% guarantee that it will um, mitigate those identified impacts and there may be some residual ecological impacts. But irrespective, even if there are some residual economic uh, 
ecological um, impacts that the benefits associated with this particular de um, development because of the the notable um economic and and social and cultural uh, positive benefits of the development as such that the planning balance still remains heavily in favour of granting plan permission for this development. So again, subject to the legal agreement as as uh, referred to in the report being amended to allow that backstop, again, we're quite satisfied it continues to accord with policy and that the benefits of this development outweigh any identified residual impacts as a consequence. Um, very much briefly, the report also goes into other matters related to the legal agreement, and these, these wouldn't necessarily normally be brought back before committee, but it's more for completeness. Um, so the, it re refers to sustainable transport and the contribution required for providing changes to the plan and um, to the, uh, the active travel route nearby to the um, National Cycle Network. And it also deals with issues to do with advanced landscaping, which is being covered within the agreement. The um, there's also a number of conditions that are referred to, and I won't go into detail, but the, the very much the gist of it really is um, the applicants have requested some changes to conditions just to align processes and make to try and make it easier to to um, implement the, the development effectively. Part of that relates to issues of timing of submissions relating to issues of phasing and the like, and all of, all of these have generally been accepted. Um, there's a couple, couple that, that haven't been changed, as the report says. Um, and the most notable one for members <clears throat> to, to, to note is issues to do with noise, because there have been slight changes to the noise conditions, all in discussion and agreement with um, Simon, our environmental health officer, who's here today. Um, and primarily, one of them is splitting up the, the figures to allow operational noise to be subject to a separate condition. And the other one relates to the actual maximum noise limits for construction. Um, and what we have done, we have uh, been effectively agreeable to amend the condition upwards to allow the limits to be slightly slightly higher at the nearest noise sensitive receptors. But again, environmental health are, are comfortable with that, have in particular regard to the 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 um, the need to ensure that this development progresses in an appropriate way, albeit balancing the construction timescales over a significant period of time with the need to protect amenity of nearby properties. So all of those matters are raised within the report. Um, with the additional conditions and therefore on page 34 um, and 35 there are four resolutions for uh, members to vote on today that the first one remains that plan permission be granted subject to the conditions and the heads of terms for legal agreements specified therein including at the bottom of page 34 the requirement for wild fox to be a developer party the second one is a standard one that effectively gives a six-month period to, to resolve all matters related to the section 106 agreement it's the same as it's been before, but I'm, I've said to the chair, I'm quite comfortable that that this isn't going to be a matter that's going to be hanging around. This is something that we, we're involved in discussions quickly, and it's very much a um, a desire on all sides to get the section 106 agreement finalised and the permission issued as soon as practically possible. Um, the third one is just related to issues to do with changes to the conditions and our heads of terms. Effectively, if if there's any need after this meeting for tweaking of matters. This just gives the delegated authority for myself and or Kerry to to talk to the chair and to <coughs> agree such matters without needing to come back, all in the purposes of um, expeditiously dealing with such matters. And the fourth, um, I refer you to the amendment sheet because there's been a slight tweak to the um, uh, to the, the the fourth resolution effectively, which is following discussion with the chair and vice chair yesterday. And, and effectively what this is doing is just co confirming that the power with with all subsequent applications rests under delegated authority as it normally would do but it's reaffirming the or seeking the resolution from members to reaffirm that they understand for that for projects of this magnitude there's a need to ensure that there's expeditious decisions are made on all applications and that that they don't unacceptably delay the implementation of the scheme um but what the additional wording at the the end of the that, that fourth resolution on the amendment sheet which is identified in bold effectively says um, while the matter will be ratified by the chair if there are me local member objections, which I certainly wouldn't anticipate, um, but there always remains the discretion of the chair of planning to request any application be determined by a planning committee. That's just a, it's a belt and braces just in case something really isn't right and something kicks off. Um, and I'm I'm more than happy for, for that amended resolution to be put before you. So subject to those four resolutions, chair, that uh, concludes my presentation. Thank you.
I beg your pardon, I'm speaking while I'm on mute. Um, I just wanted to say a big thank you, Mr. Ball, because I know you haven't been well and it was really nice to see that you've uh, pushed pushed the envelope to come and present to us today and um, I'm very grateful so thank you for that. Okay now during Mr Ball's uh, presentation we had uh, Mr Lloyd join the meeting I believe as a member of the public. I just wanted to um, express to Mr Lloyd a welcome but also to tell Mr Lloyd that you cannot use the chat function um, at this meeting you're here just to and Peter Moore has actually um, a, a been able to enter the meeting because he was having difficulties as well. So welcome to you again. Um, Thanks, Mr. Thank you. OK, no problem. OK, I'm just going to run through a little bit of running order now. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to call on um, two speakers this morning, uh, Jamie Piper and Claire Pierce, obviously uh, for uh, the application. And then I'm going to go to local members because we always uh, let the local members have their say. So and then I'm going to go to Scott Jones, Nicola Davis and Jane Jones for their input on today's application. And then we're going to go to questions. So just for everybody to know um, the running order. So with that being said, uh, Mr. Piper and Claire, uh, I don't know who wishes to go first, but have you got a five minute timer, Tam? Um, Tammy Davis is going to put the clock on when you start speaking. So who's going to go first? Uh, I, I'm going to go chair. If that's Lovely. Okay. OK, thank you, Mr. Piper. So you have been here before, so we welcome yes. you back and um, you will have five minutes when uh, when you're comfortable to start speaking. Thank you. OK, many thanks, Chair. Um, I'm delighted to be in a position to be back in front of the planning committee with these proposals, which, as most of you will be aware, myself and Peter Moore have continued to work on for the past couple of years with a view to finding funding so that the adventure resort can be delivered. In this regard, Salamanca Group have come forward and are committed to delivering these unique proposals, which offer a host of benefits to local area including a substantial amount of direct jobs during the construction and operational phases, as well as increased spending in the local economy. As my colleague Claire Pe Pierce from Salamanca will confirm in a few moments, Salamanca have a track record of the delivery of large scale projects and have funding in place to progress these proposals. Salamanca are keen to progress with the submission reserve matters at the earliest opportunity and then on to the construction phase. Both Peter Moore and myself, as well as Ron McLean from ACOM, have all been engaged by Salamanca to support these proposals going forward. And it has been impressive to see their level of diligence and thought that has already gone into the next stages of the project, including on-site delivery. From a planning perspective, very little has changed since this application was last brought before you. The publication of Futures Wales and Planning Policy, planning policy Wales Edition 11 in early 2021 have been given detailed consideration and has, as has been summarised within your office report to committee, the proposals are in accordance with these. Regarding compliance with the council's development plan, an updated business plan has been submitted on behalf of Sal Salamanca, with this demonstrating the deliverability of the proposals and the fact that it has been planned on a sound financial basis. This has been reviewed by your offices within the context of policy T01 of the local development plan, and it confirmed in their report to this committee that the requirements of this policy are satisfied. The content of the scheme remains unchanged from that previously presented to you, as are the Section 106 commitments, which the Council is to secure as part of the Outline Planning Commission. On the basis of the above and the fact that the only significant change in circumstance since this com committee last considered this application is that funding for the project is now in place, it is respectfully requested that members resolve once again to grant outline planning permission subject to the signing of the Section 106 agreement. The drafting of this document is well advanced and it is expected it will be available for signing imminently. Before I hand over to Claire Pierce from Salamanca, may I offer my thanks to both officers and members for continuing to offer support to these proposals and allowing the time that has been necessary to get matters to this stage. It has been pleasing after significant efforts on everyone's part to be here today with the backing of an organisation that is fully committed to turning these long awaited proposals into a reality. And should you have any queries, I'm happy to answer these. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Piper. Um, 
I'm sure members will uh, have some questions later on, but um, at this point, I'm going to go to Claire Pierce from Salamanca. Welcome to you, uh, Ms. Pierce. Um, you haven't been here before, but uh, we extend our welcome to you. And you will have the same set of conditions, um, five minutes to speak um, when you're ready. Thank you. Good morning and thank you, Chair. I'm delighted to meet you all virtually today and speak with the committee. Firstly, let me introduce myself. I'm Claire Pearce, formerly a Davis, a Pembrokeshire girl and former Welsh hockey player. So personally committed to this project and remain red through and through. So very pleased to speak with you today. So since completing my training, I've worked across the private and public sectors on many regeneration projects, road, rail, retail, housing, and my focus has always been on delivery and finding solutions. So I continue to thrive on making things happen on the ground for communities and for businesses. Until two years ago, I was the Chief Planning Officer at Sedgemoor District Council in Somerset, working closely with members of the Executive and Planning Committee there for over 15 years on 2,000 planning applications a year. And one of the largest projects, Hinkley Point C, uh, which is the largest construction project in Europe, creating over 25,000 jobs, and many of those are actually gone to, to Welsh people as well. So really good experience in actually making things happen in terms of regeneration. So presently, I'm the Director of Planning and Development at Salamanca Group, and currently lead a team for the 616-acre regeneration project called Gravity, which is near Bridgewater in, in Somerset. And as part of that role, we'll be generating seven, seven and a half thousand jobs. And recently I spoke in Cardiff as part of the Western Gateway Conference about major regeneration in what is the new powerhouse between Swindon and, and Swansea. So turning to the application before you today, Salamanca Group are really pleased to be able to provide a strategic leadership role to take accountability for the Avon Valley project, to align finance to planning and delivery and make sure the vision is actually turned into reality. So our role will be to work closely with you, the council and wider partners to make things happen. So we're already creating our team, some of which you know before, with a new energy and drive to now really make this happen. First of three Wild Fox Adventure Resorts, we want Avon Valley to be an amazing success locally for the local community to be employed and local businesses to be engaged in the supply chain. Our ambition, and it is, it is ambitious, is to open in, in 2024. And to make that happen, we really need to collectively now decide on how we're going to make that happen and the steps we need to take following the committee today. If the committee is minded to reaffirm support, we will seek to sign the Section 106 agreement within days, establish a delivery team and work very closely with council officers on ecology and habitat management. Landscape restoration and recovery is really, really important to us and it will be vital to ensure the right quality for the resort to make it a success. It has to be high quality. We want guests to experience exhilarating holidays and we want them to come back to Wales fundamentally. So we want to explore with delivery partners now what is the art of the possible to make this all a reality. But before I can conclude, I want to really focus on people sometimes missed as part of the planning process, you know, with the priority on, on environmental issues largely. So my background is in economic development. So for me, investment in people, you know, is important as, as the site itself. So we will be building on our environmental and social governance policy and developing a skills and business charter to set our, out our approach of working with partners and schools, the college and universities to ensure training and access to jobs as well as encouraging the use of local businesses in the supply chain. One Quality of left, Claire. Thank you. So quality of service to customers is really important. So those high standards may require bespoke training. And I'll be introducing you shortly to partners uh, in Vance Forward who will be supporting local schools to build that personal resilience required to be a workforce of the future. So we're genuinely committed to making Wild Fox Resort a tremendous success in Avon Valley and we look forward to working with you all. Thank you. 
Oh, thank you very much, Ms. Pierce. Um, and I'm sure that uh, if if approved today, that that would be the sympathies of all. Thank you very much. OK, so we've heard from the two uh, app members who want to speak on, on behalf of the applicant. I'm now going to turn to uh, the local members who are not governed by the five minute clock. I don't do that to local members. So in no particular order, I'm going to go with uh, Councillor Jane Jones. Jane, if you could speak. Thank you, sir. OK. Um, we met with um, officials in the, in the theatre a couple of weeks ago, and it's so exciting. It's really exciting for the, not only for us members, but for the entire of Neath for Talbot and beyond. And we thank you very much, Claire. Thank OK. You, OK, Jane. Um, Nicola Davis, please. Thank you, Chair. Sorry, apologies, you can't see me. I'm having a bit of trouble with my video call. No problem at all, as long as we can hear you. Um, yeah, to be honest, you know, it is an exciting time for the Upper Avon Valley. Um, job opportunities are few and far between, you know, closure of the mines and factories. So this, hopefully, if it goes ahead, which we are praying it does, and I thank everybody involved, you know, um, it's, it's going to bo boost the Upper Avon Valley tremendously in every shape and form. And also, like I said, the surrounding areas as well. So really, I just pray in and thanking everyone involved that this goes ahead. And like, I do Sorry, Suzanne. No, that's... Uh, how, are you finished, Councillor? Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to thank uh, Peter and his team as well. That's Thank fine. you very much. OK, thank you very much. And then... Uh, the last local member, Councillor Scott Jones, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, can I uh, firstly take this opportunity to thank you as the Chair and Vice Chair for uh, allowing myself and my colleagues to attend uh, today's meeting, you know, and speak uh, on such uh, important application. Uh, firstly, I would uh, again like to take the opportunity to thank Peter Moore, Martin and their teams you know, for the continuous commitment in Wanting to deliver such proposals here within the Abraham Valley. Uh, Chair, you'll be pleased to know that I don't intend to repeat everything that I previously said in 2019. Uh, however, I do wish to reiterate uh, and put on record my support uh, for this particular project. I believe, Chair, it uh, has enormous potential uh, to transform uh, living standards uh, in the whole of the area, you know, and the wider county borough, uh, and will provide the very much needed employment opportunities along with a number of other massive benefits. Uh, clearly, Chair, a tremendous amount of work has gone into this proposal, uh, even from an officer perspective, uh, and I'd like to take that opportunity to thank all of our officers that's had a vital role uh, to play in this application. Uh, Chair, it'll be fantastic, hopefully, you know, that uh, uh, the whole of the planning committee will endorse uh, such an important uh, application. Thanks very much. Jochen Bau. You're on mute, Chair. You're on mute, Chair. Sorry. I should leave it off. Uh, right. Thank you, Councillor Hunt. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to open it up now to members of the planning committee and I've already uh, I've got three hands up. So in that order, uh, Councillor Hunt, then Councillor Wilcock and then Councillor Meisen, and then we'll see who else wants to speak. So uh, Councillor Hunt, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, it's a privilege uh, to be here today. I, I can only echo the local members' thoughts and uh, comments uh, in, in respect to the, the, the authority itself of impatience. Um, it can't have been easy for Salamanca and its partners over such a, uh, a period of time, uh, given the coronavirus and the COVID-19 has played part in that. Uh, I also welcome and will be fully supporting this application here this morning. Uh, I, I, I think um, Salamanca, I, I was thinking an adventure park, it sounds like something out of James Bond. Um, I'm sure there's a character of something close to that uh, name within the, within the James Bond films. But no, on a serious note, uh, I'm, I'm also chair of uh, um, Regeneration and Sustainable Development Scrutiny Committee. 
So uh, I'm quite actually, Claire, very jealous as a, a, a councillor from uh, the Dillice Valley. Um, it, 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 it is important that uh, the, the Valley communities see investment, jobs, uh, and, and, and everything else that will go over this. I'm sure the, the knock-on effects, not just for Neath but Talbot, but the, the, the Maesteg areas and the, the, lo- the closest communities to the Avon Valley, will be huge as well. So I, I will put this down to a, a, a Welsh investment in, in retrospect, and uh, I welcome it 100%. It's a wonderful thing to see, and I'm looking forward to visiting it as well. Um, just one question I do have for Mr. Justin Griffiths, Chair, and as yeah. I said, there's no negativity from me, but it, it's just something that I need to ask is that uh, I've looked in the report. The infrastructure is, is uh, uh, you know, there's tens and tens of millions of pounds, a massive project. And Peter, I can see you popping up on my screen. Uh, I'd like to thank you personally as well, because uh, I've been in uh, here from the very beginning, from when it sort of became an idea to, to get to where we are today. So I thank you and, and all those that are not here in their uh, sort of involvement. But just in the infrastructure, we all know the Avon Valley uh, infrastructure is pretty poor. Now, if this resort is going to be very successful, which I assume it will and, and expect it to, I just wonder what we have for um, transport. I'm, um, I know, Chair, this is an outline planning application and perhaps it'll come back in more detail or whatever, but I think it's important to ask a this stage is to understand because while it's exciting and everything else that's said uh, I concur with we have to remember it, there, there's still an awful lot of people living in the valley there uh, and uh, traffic is important and uh, I just wondered uh, you know I've seen it when the when the, the Monkey thing was opened in Aberdeen, and I've seen I've seen so many uh, activities that have created gridlock. So I just wondered on that side of it, Chair. Sorry for for rambling as I do. I think you know me by now, and all members do. But uh, yeah, it's, that's the only question I have is to uh, mitigation on, on, on highway safety and transport to get to this particular resort as and when it gets developed if we pass it today. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I appreciate uh, you, give, you giving me your, your time, Chair. OK, thank you, Councillor. Yeah. Um, Justin, there was a question there for you. Yes, uh, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, just is a couple of points, really, I want to come back. Uh, thank you, Councillor Hunt, for the, um, for the question. There is a number of conditions written within the um, uh, the decision notice for this development, which relates to additional road safety audits and uh, um, road um, traffic regulation orders and signage, etc. You know, because there are going to be predominantly two access points, uh, primary points coming into the development itself. Um, so that will be looked at, I suppose, in, in detail um, when the development matures. But also, yeah, I, my colleague Steve Ball did touch upon active travel with regards to access to and from and sustainable modes of transport to and from this development, which is uh, which is absolutely fundamental. And the third point I would like to raise is that this development would have been subject to a transport impact assessment, which would have looked at the local county roads beforehand and uh, would have been provided with a forecast of the development as it um, currently is, uh, sorry, the area as it currently is, the development post planning and post construction, sorry, uh, of what the traffic movements would be like, and also a forecast of 15 years beyond that, which would be compliant with TAN 18 as well, which is the Welsh Government requirements for transport impact assessments. And that's, uh, I hope that's answered your question then, Councillor Hunt. Thank you, Chair. Mute again. I'm sorry, I was on mute again. And thank you very much, Mr. Griffiths. Does that answer your question, Councillor Hunt? Yes, Chair, I, I, I did see within the report, and I know Mr. Ball wants to add a little bit to that, yeah, but I yeah. am satisfied, and as I said, uh, it's important to ask these questions at this time, but uh, I, as I said, I, I thank Claire and the colleagues and everybody else to have in the confidence as well, Chair, to have in the confidence to look at the bigger picture and what can be achieved. 
uh, I may I may be emailing Claire to see if there's something she can do up in my valley. <laughs> but, but one at a time, councillor. <laughs> <laughs> all jokes, all jokes aside, I, I, I thank you very much for everybody's <laughs> input, and I will. 100% be supporting this application this morning. Uh, <laughs> I, thank you, Chair. That's nice to know, Councillor Hunt. Thank you. Now, before I go to the Councillor Wilcock and my son, uh, Mr Ball has indicated he wishes to come in. Yeah, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, for, first of all, uh, Councillor Hunt, don't be greedy. You've got the Global Centre Rail Excellence up your area as well. So, I mean, I think we've, um, <laughs> we, we've got two transformational projects on the go at the same time. So, um, I know you, you you like as much as you can get, and I'm sure you'll take as much as you, <laughs> anything else that comes your way. But um, I think we, we've been um, f very fortunate to have two significant projects over the last few years that have culminated in, you know, very short time scales to come before the committee so you know you, you can have your extensions and, and your change your use come to committee or you can have transformational projects that hopefully will actually both be delivered on the ground with with um, substantial and significant benefits so fingers crossed for, for both of those so um all, all i wanted to say really um in response to council hunt's points really is is just reaffirming as much as anything that all the transportation impacts have been addressed in both of the previous two reports so what the report doesn't do today is it doesn't go into all the minutiae because those matters have already been considered and resolved upon previously um in, in, in that regard there has been no material change in site or policy circumstances related particularly to those kind of transportation impacts that would would come mean that there'd be any different resolution should be reached today anyway but I do reaffirm what Justin has said is that all those impacts have been considered. There's a raft of conditions. Um, one matter that is addressed within the report today relates to the travel plan. And we have reaffirmed the need to maintain the travel plan condition as originally drafted. Um, it may well be that that could subsequently be reviewed in the future. Um, but at the moment, we feel it's, it's necessary for it to be um, a detailed monitoring schedule covering initial five year period and, and and thereafter because it is important to ensure that developments such as this play their part and I have no doubt that it will seek to do so. Um, I, I've often said about you know the field of dreams approach if you build it they will come and I do think not only will the people come but actually by by having that that's this scale of development it will have its own consequential benefits anyway and i think by not only the the, the active travel improvements we're talking about but generally the need for the travel plan coordination the relationship and trying to get encouraging visitors to actually come into the train stations to actually be to be brought up from the train it, it has potential benefits for port talbot and the like as well so all those things have been addressed in the earlier reports will very much form the basis of, of officers um, considerations in terms of the conditions and, and I have no doubt at all and, and I've been seeing Claire nodding away that this is all part and parcel of, of their clear plans in terms of their environmental social governance modelling as, as well so I'm, I'm quite comfortable and confident that but they're valid points to raise Chair, uh, Councillor Hunt. Thank you. Thank you Mr Ball. Okay I'm going to go along now to Councillor Wilcox's question. Not a question, Chair. Oh, Council by all means, yeah. It, 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 with, with indulgence, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, yeah. Uh, uh, Chair, I, I believe that this uh, uh, is universally accepted uh, that this is a very exciting project uh, that is welcomed by the vast majority of people. However, were it not for the diligence of planning officers and the robust and effective scrutiny undertaken by members of this planning committee, past and present, we wouldn't be where we, ha where we are today. However, again, uh, and as outlined in several places in this report, there is still not 100% certainty that the project will be delivered on the ground. To that end, Chair, I think it's pleasing to note that Recommendation 2 requires the signing of a Section 106 agreement by the 12th of April 2022, and that if not undertaken, delegated authority be granted to refuse planning consent. I believe, Chair, that after a, pro a protracted series of events, that insurance policy is an absolute necessity. It is hoped that uh, the triggering of that condition will not be required, and that shovels can be put into the ground as soon as possible thereby delivering this project for the benefit of the county borough and wider afield. Not to mention the jobs opportunities 
that will be created at construction and the completed project. And to that end, Chair, when you are ready, I am more than happy to move the recommendations in front of us this morning. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Wilcock. And I'll come back to you then. Um, Councillor Meisen, do you have a comment or a question? Uh, a comment, thank you, Chair. Okay. Um, yeah, it's um, like to endorse everything that everyone has said so far. Um, like Councillor Hunt, I remember going on the site visit up there <laughs> a number of years ago and um, being put, seeing the vision that put forward before us, I was um, excited beyond all, well, you know, expectations really, and listening to Jamie and Peter giving their talks, um, I, I could imagine what it what it would look like in the future, you know. So I've been on the, I'm back in this right from the very beginning. Um, and with the work that's going on with the Tunnel as well, these are exciting times for the Upper Avon Valley. Uh, I'm not a local member of the next one down the valley. Uh, so I'm still Avon Valley, but not up there. I'm the Lower Avon. So uh, yeah, it is, it, these are exciting times. And then um, I think if, you, if somebody goes back in a minute, so I did wish and hope that I'd be spending a, my 70th birthday, perhaps going down a zip wire, I did, I did say. Um, but I'm glad that Claire said that they are hoping that it would be in 2024. So I forgive you all. And I hope then that I'll be my 71st birthday going on a zip fire or perhaps a, a raft down the white water uh, area. So, uh, yes, I'm totally behind this project. And uh, I thank you to everybody for the work you're doing, um, officers and members from Salamanca and the Wild Fox Group and uh, Peter and Jamie for all the work. Uh, and yet I will, I'm waiting for Councillor Wilcock to endo, uh, propose it and I would happily second the motion, Chair. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Councillor. Um, I haven't got any indications of speakers uh, going forward now. Any questions or comments? So I would also like to reiterate um, what Councillor Wilcock has said: is uh, the ongoing commitment from this council to this project. Um, it's been given a lot of officer time, um, and we we just um, very pleased that you know there is an application before us today. We have seen an outline uh, planning permission before, and um, we, as a committee, we took decisions to sort of hold fast and and just see how it developed. And I think that was a good decision for this uh, authority and for the planning committee. But the the officers are to be congratulated because you know this doesn't happen just because you want it to. This has been a lot of hard work. Um, so I would like to commend officers as well. And um, hopefully this will um, materialise and we will have a shovels and grounds, as somebody said earlier on. Before I go to um, recommendation, um, I normally go back to local members just to see if there's anything that they uh, have thought of during the debate that they wish to add. If you haven't, uh, or if you have, if you could just please indicate. Um, either Scott, Jane or Nicola. No, they've said everything they want to say. That's fine. That being said, then I would like to take you to the recommendation on page 34. Um, and it is the recommendation is uh, to approve subject. It's, it's in four parts. And I would like to draw your attention to number four, as Mr. Ball did, that um, we want this to develop uh, at, at all speed if you know whatever speed the developers are comfortable with we don't want any hold ups just because of um, minor changes that may have to be agreed along the way but at the pre-brief um, it was mentioned that overall control should remain with the members via the planning committee and therefore uh, it would rest with the chair of planning at, to sort of um, allow something to come to committee should it be necessary. I'm hoping that it won't be necessary. I'm hoping that everything will be dealt with under delegated powers because that will result in a smooth um, building of, 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 the, of the event. So we don't want to interfere, but we just want to um, speak to residents and tell them overall control lies with the planning committee still so um but that's only going to be used 
if, if it absolutely has to. So that being said, there are four parts to the recommendation. Um, and I've already had an offer from Councillor Wilcox, so I will call on him now to propose. Yeah, I move the recommendations on page 34 and 35, Chair, with noting the amendment of uh, course. in respect of uh, recommendation four. I formally move. Thank you, Councillor Wilcock. Uh, Councillor Meisen, did you say you would second? Yes, I'm uh, very happy to second that, Chair. OK, thank you. Uh, Tammy, if you could go through voting members of the committee, ask them if they have been present through, throughout because of technical details, somebody may have not seen some part of it. If they've been present and which way they would like to vote, please. Certainly, Chair, thank you for that. Chair, I'll start with yourself. Have you been present for the entirety of this site, Dan? And how do you wish to vote? Yes, I have been present for all the debate and I will vote for the recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Same questions, please, to Councillor Sean Percy, Vice Chair. Thanks, Tammy. I've been uh, present throughout the item and I'll be voting for. Thank you, Councillor Percy. Councillor Ros Davis. I have been present uh, for the whole item and I'm very happy to support the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Ridian Mason. Yes, I can confirm that I've been present for the whole agenda uh, item and I am uh, happy to vote for the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Scott Bamsey, please. Thank you, Sammy. Yeah, I can confirm I've been here for the whole item and uh, vote for the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Steve Hunt. I have been here for the whole application item and I am delighted to do, uh, support of the application this morning. Thank you, Councillor Hunt. Councillor Arwin Walcock, please. Yes, Chair, I confirm that I've been here for the entire agenda item and I'm voting for the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Suzanne Renkers, please. I've been here for the whole uh, meeting and I vote for. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Rachel Taylor, please. Hi, Tammy. I can confirm I've been here for the whole item and I am voting for. Thank you. Councillor Chris Williams, please. Thank you, Tammy. I can confirm that I've been present for the whole meeting and fully support this application. Thank you. And finally, Councillor Mark Prothero, please. Thank you, Tammy. Yes, I confirm I've been here for the whole item and I'm very, very happy to support the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor. Chair, that decision has been approved unanimously. Thank you, uh, Tammy. So, um, yes, unanimous decision. And I can hear by the comments made by the voting members, this is absolutely uh, an exciting development, which is now being given uh, the go ahead. So to Jamie Piper and Claire Peace, Pierce and also um, Peter Moore, um, Good speed uh, with your uh, application now, and I'm sure that we, the officers of this council, will give you every assistance as you're going forward. Thank you for your attendance this morning. Um, there are no other items for us to deliberate on. Uh, so with that being said, I'll thank you all very much for your consideration and attention and bid you a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Da bo, Chair. Okay, okay, bye, Chair. Okay, everyone. Uh, thank you, Chair. Bye. Nice, nice thank you, Chair. Bye. Thank you, everyone. All right. Bye. Yeah, All right. bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Okay. So, Peter's staying on a little bit. You're going to uh, stop the recording, Tam? Yes, Sammy. If you stop the recording now, we can have a little... Do you want me to stay on, Chair? Steve, are you happy for me to go? Off you pop. No, I don't think yeah. anybody really needs to. It's just that they okay. wanted to. That's no all. Problem. Thank you, Justin. No Thank problem. You. Thank you, Chair. Tell that. OK, all Steve. It's, yeah, it's, it's still recording. Do you want me to? I think I can do that. Yeah, I, 